Stay all day, Doc. You are now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is your fears are overrated. Now, before we get into this, let me tell you, I want to have a daily motivation text that I send out every single day. Guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point to everyone in my text community. If you want to get into that community, get this message for free. Straight to your phone, all you gotta do is text me at my number, which is 305-384-6894. And every day when I send that message out, you'll be receiving it. Secondly, my next live event, Work On Your Game Live, is happening in person, February 3rd and 4th in Miami. Get your ticket by going to workonyourgame.live. At that event, we'll be covering mindset, strategy, systems, and execution for your personal and professional life. You can apply this to anything that you do, doesn't matter what you do for a living. Go to that page, look at the testimonials, watch the testimonial videos from people who have been to my events, people who are working me directly see what people have said I'll show it to you directly so you only have to take my word for it let those people tell you directly so you know that you are in the right place with the right person you are in the right hands again get your ticket I'm going to work on your game live and third you want to get into my coaching program or you would like to take any of my courses like bulletproof mindset 30 days of discipline ASAP confidence sell yourself toughen up uh, content machine all of those are available by going to work on your game university.com again work on your game university.com you get all the access to all the courses and my coaching program again work on your game university.com all set getting into the topic here today which is your fears are overrated definition of a fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or a threat this is something that especially over the last uh, three years or so, has been a big thing. Ever since the, the COVID virus came around and a whole bunch of people were in fear over the virus or what was supposed to happen with the virus or what they thought was gonna happen or what was being reported to happen with that. And then just fears people have started to use just socially, fears of things that are not really anything that can actually hurt you in a, a What's the way I would say it? In a logical, rational sense, but now people have created these new reasons for people to be fearful. Well, you don't want to hear anything that can make you fearful. You don't want to see anything that can make you or that could cause you pain or cause you harm or you don't want to be around anyone or you don't want a person who could say something that you don't like because you're calling that. If someone says something that you don't like, you're calling that pain or hurt or harm, so now that person shouldn't be allowed to you know, exist. They shouldn't be allowed to have a, a show or a, a book, or they shouldn't be allowed to be interviewed, or they shouldn't you know anything that they do should just automatically be deleted and canceled and not allowed to take place because somehow what they do is leading to, again, what it says here, definition of fear, is going to cause danger, pain, or a threat to other people. So the unpleasant emotion is the fear, and fear is, fear is a thing that people do feel, but the fear is, again, is only fear if you believe that something's gonna cause danger, pain, or a threat. And people have expanded the definition of what danger, pain, and threat is so that more people are more fearful of more things. That's what's happened here, and that's why this episode is necessary, because your fears are overrated. And again, these days, there are more things that people are trying to uh, convince you to be fearful of. So we've discussed fear in uh, many episodes of this show. I wanna give you a, a few of them in which we talked about fear, at least this type of fear. Episode 82, four symptoms of your fear addiction. Episode number 256, a leader cannot fear disappointing people. Episode number 332, eliminating the fear of failure. Episode 527, how to deal with fear. Episode 1074, how to make moves when fear is on your mind. Episode 1189, what you would accomplish without fear in your way. Episode 1207, don't settle for good enough out of fear that you won't find better. 
Uh, I've talked about fear in a bunch more episodes. I'll give you a, a couple more. Episode 1372, fear controls you only with your permission. Episode 1556, how to stop living in fear. So there are a bunch more. You can see the list of every episode that's ever come out on the show if you simply go to workonyourgamepodcast.com, by the way. So anytime that if any episode that I mentioned should be linked down below in the description, if you don't see it or whatever reason, the link is not taking you where you need to go. Just go to workonyourgamepodcast.com and every episode that we put out is listed there on that page. So you always have a resource to listen to past episodes since the feeds here, the RSS feeds for the Apple, Spotify, etc. They only list, I think, maybe the last 500 episodes. So if there's anything older than that that you don't see in the app that you're listening to me on, just go to workonyourgamepodcast.com. It'll always be there. So getting more into the still an introduction here. What we want to discuss, since we talked about fear so many episodes here, we're going to continue to discuss it in the future as well. I'm sure I'm going to have more reasons to talk about it because fear is the most debilitating emotion that slows people down and holds them back from their own success. Fear more than anything else. And the point of today's masterclass is to help you understand that many of your fears are blown out of proportion by your emotions and fear is an emotion itself, but other emotions lead to that fear and fear is the leading emotion and emotions tend to magnify things. So when you're emotional, you magnify whatever your emotion is focused on. When you're really happy, you're yet that emotion of happiness magnifies whatever you're happy about. And that's usually a good thing when you're fearful or anxious or stressed out. Those emotions magnify whatever the source of or whatever the focus of those emotions are. So let's talk about that. And this is why uh, you are in the emotional management business. This is something that uh, I've talked about in episode 2155, how emotions are great gas pedals, but terrible steering wheels. And this was episode number 560, you're in the emotional management business. Let's get into it. Point number one. Today's topic, once again, is your fears are overrated. Looking at that definition again, it says the belief that something is dangerous or likely to cause pain or a threat. So let's get a definition of these words, pain or a threat. Definition of a threat is a statement of an intention to inflict pain, injury, damage, or other hostile action on someone in retribution for something done or not done. That's the definition of a threat. A statement of intention to inflict pain, injury, damage, or hostile action. That's what a threat is. So when you hear people talking about threats, keep this definition in mind and, and notice again, when it comes to things that make people nervous, anxious, uh, stressed out, or fearful, and cause, and all of these energies, by the way, all of these emotions, cause people to constrict. It causes people to do less, to make themselves smaller, to try less, to speak up less, to act less, to just basically live in a, a smaller and smaller shell when they have these emotions. These negative emotions cause people to constrict and get smaller, whereas positive emotions like uh, confidence, boldness, happiness, uh, positive, any kind of positive energies, they cause people to expand, grow, do more, and move forward. So I want you to notice, just societally, over the last three years, what kind of energies have, you, have been being fed to you? And these, again, it's not a new thing, actually. These kind of energies have been fed to us all the time, but they were fed in smaller doses. Nowadays, especially over the last three years, it's been accelerated that now you're being fed, we're all being fed material that is designed to put us into these negative emotional states. And those negative emotional states, what they do is they cause people to constrict to get smaller and do less. And then when that happens, because people are in this state, they are much more easily controlled, they are much more easily um, misled, they are much more easily uh, cajoled into doing things that they don't want to do or cajoled into not doing things that they do want to do. And then what it becomes is people become slaves to their own minds because it's not what other people say that forces you to do anything. Even though you may like to you know, point the finger at them, it's what other people say in your response or reaction to what other people say that causes you to get into these emotional states and that causes you to do less. So it ultimately comes back to you, but it's your response to what other people are doing. And again, over the last three years, you've seen a lot of this. So again, that definition of threat, you see how it's been expanded from what the dictionary says to people are calling everything a threat now. Let's get another definition. This is the definition of the word pain, because pain is also part of the definition of fear. Definition of pain is physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. 
When we experience fear, everybody, it is an anticipation of possible pain. Pain is the end game of fear when the fear is actually real. So if you experience fear and then you end up feeling pain, then that meant your fear was actually a real thing because something was about to actually happen. So if you're afraid of, let's see, what's something that you could be afraid of? If you're afraid of uh, falling off your bicycle when you were a kid and then you actually fall off the bicycle and you scrape your knee and you're bleeding, and you're feeling a little bit of pain, okay, maybe your fear was warranted. Doesn't mean you should never ride a bike again, but it actually makes it warranted because the pain did actually happen. Pain is the end game of fear when the fear is real. Unfortunately, there are some people out there who have worked hard to cast a much wider net of things that you should be afraid of, i.e. in fear of. So now we have more people being afraid of more stuff. And now it's not only being afraid of stuff that could cause you pain, like again, falling off your bicycle, maybe there's a little bit of discomfort there. I don't know if it's actual pain. I don't, I don't know if, I mean, I never saw somebody fall off their bicycle and they just couldn't, at least not scraping their knee, a kid scraping their knee and it was over for them. I mean, they, they bled a little bit, but they survived for the most part. But what's happened now is people have casted this wider net of things to be afraid of. And now people are afraid of things that can't possibly cause you any pain, yet you're still afraid of them. So people are trying to get away from and afraid of and trying to avoid or shut down or delete or cancel things that couldn't even be painful to you. So you shouldn't be afraid of them. See, the definition of pain has been expanded to include things that you hear, you see, or even thinking about something that you disagree with. Now, this is all part of pain now. Now, so when, we, when I say pain, I'm also including these phrases that usually people don't say, well, I don't want to cause people pain. Usually people say, well, we don't, we want to, we want to make sure nobody's being hurt or nobody's being harmed. Those are the words you're hearing now. Hurt and harm are just different forms of the word pain. They can be used interchangeably in the context of this conversation. And people have expanded that to mean, I don't want to hear anything that can be hurtful or harmful for me, i.e. painful. I don't want to see anything that can be painful. And I don't even want to think that someone's thinking something that could be painful to me. Is this true or is this not? I'm not making this up, am I? And because people have accepted these things as forms of pain, now people are afraid of encountering these things. And what happens is, is cause people to attack and attempt to cancel stuff that otherwise should, there's no reason why anybody should need to cancel these things. Or maybe you disagree with something. There's a lot of things that I disagree with, but I don't want to cancel them. Actually, I want them to keep going because the more they share, the more I can understand either maybe I had the wrong impression of them and maybe I, I'm all right with them. I don't disagree. Or maybe I disagree even more the more that I learn about them and I realize what they're really trying to say. See, I talked about why the dictionary matters in episode 2385 and I talked about cancel culture in episode 1755. Cancel culture is based on fear. That's all cancel culture is based on. It's based on fear. When someone sees something that they are afraid of for whatever reason, and again, they don't usually say, well, I'm afraid of this, so let's cancel it. What they say is, well, it's causing hurt, harm, slash pain to other people, or it's threatening to other people, or this thing could lead to a threat. It could lead to hurt or harm of other people. So that reason, for that reason, we should cancel it. That is a form of fear. People want to cancel anything that they are uncomfortable with, those who are involved in cancel culture, that is. They want to cancel things that they are uncomfortable with encountering under the guise that it is potentially creating pain in other people or themselves who, for whatever reason, these cancelers feel that certain people need to be shielded from all possible pain. And this is all based in fear, all of it. And I want you to understand a truth here. A life based in fear never results in prosperity. And I don't care what uh, religious text you study, what spiritual background you have, uh, who else you listen to aside from just this show. There has never been a life based in fear that resulted in prosperity. Not one ever. And there never will be one. Keep that thought in mind as we move on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is your fears are overrated. Number two, fear is not a sign of things that need to be eliminated, canceled, avoided, run away from, or halted. That's not what fear is. And this is why people who are participating in cancel culture actually have it all wrong. Again, the cancel culture episode is episode 1755. Fear is not a sign of something you need to get rid of. Fear is a sign of what you need to go towards 
what you need to do attack engage with and look on the other side of that's what fear is when you're feeling fear that is a sign that you need to go in that direction not go away from it not delete it not cancel it not get it shut down or um, censored or whatever other things people do to try to eliminate something that they don't like you should do the exact opposite of what cancel culture folks are doing in other words if you want to be different from most people who do the first set of actions canceling deleting when they encounter fear do the opposite of what they do which means the second set of actions go towards the thing that is creating anxiety stress and fear within you let's look at some examples now how many salespeople here and everybody here's a salesperson on some level but how many of you have ever experienced call reluctance for those who don't know what that is call reluctance is when you have something to offer to a certain person or people and you know that in order to offer it to them you have to actually let them know that it exists which means you're going to have to initiate a conversation with them and let them know that the thing is happening and that can be in the form of literally making a phone call and selling something to somebody that's one way you make a call another way could be posting something on your social media and making sure that people see it another could be sending an email out to your list Another one nowadays can be sending a text message out. Another could be running an advertisement. Another could be announcing on your show, like your podcast or your YouTube, that you have a product or something for sale. These are all different ways of making a call, so to speak, to an audience to let them know that you have a thing. And I'm talking about a call where you know it's actually gonna be seen and heard and people are going to see it and they get to make a choice. So how many of you have ever experienced call reluctance? And again, it could be a text, email, it could be a direct message as well. Why are people, why do people get reluctant to make phone calls? What, why the reluctance to make a call? I mean, you can make money on the other side of the call, right? If you make the call and somebody says no, well, you're in the same spot you were in before. They just said no. If they say yes, then you make money. So why would somebody be reluctant to do something that's gonna make you money? I don't, I don't know anybody who doesn't like making money. The reason people are reluctant is because of the fear of how that other person will respond or react to you when, again, the topic here today is your fears are overrated. How many people here have ever abstained from an opportunity, any opportunity, that was right in front of you simply because you were afraid of what might happen if you engaged? I think everybody has experienced that at least once in life, that you had something that you could have said, but you didn't say it, something that you could have did, but you didn't do it, uh, somewhere you could have went, but you didn't go. There was an opportunity in front of you, maybe you didn't think about it immediately in a moment, but maybe a few minutes or a few days or weeks later, you look back and said, damn, you know, I could have did something right there, but I didn't do it. Everybody has experienced that at some point. All of us have seen that. All of us have done it in our lives. Now, how many people listen to me right now have something that you could do in your life today that you're not doing because of your fear of the unknown? See, it's not a fear of what's actually going to happen because you don't know what's going to happen. You haven't done anything yet. Your fear is of what you don't know will happen. It's the unknown that you're actually afraid of. I can say with certainty that all of us, again, have at least one thing going on right now in our lives that we could do or take advantage of or uh, take initiative with that we simply haven't done. But remember what Earl Nightingale said in The Strangest Secret. If you look around and you want to put yourself ahead of 99% of the people in any area, look at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite of that. Most people run away from and avoid fear at all costs. All you have to do is go towards it. Just do the opposite of most people. Fear is, again, the topic here today is fear is overrated. There are a few things that it makes sense to be afraid of, like you no know, plane in traffic or flying a plane if you never flew one before. You should be afraid of doing those things. But most of the things that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis in the world that we live in today, this our world today is the safest that it has ever been doesn't mean that everything is perfectly safe, but it's as safe as it's ever been. And most of the things that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis are not things that are going to threaten your life or threaten your safety or threaten your freedom. So what you're afraid of for the most part are things that are really trivial and what's on the other side of them can't cause you any real pain. Now, maybe you have been conditioned and uh, indoctrinated to believe that certain things are painful when they're not actually painful. Maybe things that you may disagree with or things that you don't like or things that you 
Uh, what's another word that we can put in there? Just something that may be annoying to you, something like that, but it's nothing to actually be afraid of. It's just something that, again, just the way that people have indoctrinated, a lot of minds have been indoctrinated, especially over the last three years with this anxiety, fear, and stress of just being afraid of anything or being afraid of something real. And the thing is this, the more you exist in a state of pain, anxiety, not pain, but fear, anxiety, and stress, the easier it is for you to feel fear, anxiety, and stress about the next thing that comes along, even if that next thing is nothing. So when you're in a state of fearful, fearfulness, anxiousness, anxiety, and stress, something could come along that is, is not inducing of that at all, but because you're already in the state, you see it through that paradigm of already being fearful and stressed out. So that thing just get, comes into your, it just gets, um, what's the word? It gets ingested, let's say for lack of a better term, into that whirlwind of fear and stress and anxiety that you're already feeling. So if you're already in a state of fear and then some random person walks up to you and says, hey, how are you? You might feel fearful and stressed out about that person walking up to you simply because you're already in the state. You see the energy that you're existing in at the moment colors the way you experience everything that happens in life. Can everybody, everybody agree that that happens? How many of you have ever come home from work and you were stressed out and anxious and maybe angry or just burned out because you had a long day at work and uh, all kinds of shit was going on at the office and all this stuff. And then you get home and your significant other or your neighbor or one of your kids says or does something that is relatively benign, innocuous, doesn't, wasn't really anything to it. But because you are already in a certain state, you reacted, not responded, but reacted in a way that was completely out of proportion to what happened. All of us can probably, if you think hard enough, and some of you might not have to think that hard, have had this experience. All of us have had this experience. Why? Because this is human nature. This is what happens to us. When you're in a state of anxiety, stress, and fear, you see everything through anxiety, stress, and fear. This is why it's such a debilitating emotion. When you're feeling it, everything seems to pile on to it. This is why it's so important that you manage your state. It's so important that you manage your energy. Give you, to give you an example, uh, 50 Cent, who I talked about in one of my uh, virtual mentors episodes, let me see what episode that was, it was episode number 316. He talked about how, and everybody knows who 50 Cent is, right, the rapper? He, now he's a, a TV producer guy, but he got shot nine times before his debut, his official debut album came out. Uh, damn near died, he shot nine times, most people don't live to talk about it, but he lived to talk about it. Put out his debut album and basically his career started based on the fact that somebody tried to kill me and they didn't succeed. So he was he built himself up this indestructible uh, gangster and made a rap career out of it. And one of the things that 50 talks about uh, when he looks back on getting shot, as I heard him say this uh, more than once, is that when you experience that, I mean, what more fear could you have besides you know, looking down, looking at somebody actually shooting a gun at you and trying to kill you? attempting to kill you, but failing to do so, but you're almost dead. I mean, he was as close to death as anybody could possibly get. And he says, after you experience something like that, you have two choices. You could either live the rest of your life in a constant state of fear, because I mean, what more fear could you experience than almost being dead? Because he experienced it, he lived it. So you could either look at everything that happens in life through that lens, Every single person you see, hey, they might pull out a gun and shoot me. Oh, this person might be trying to kill me. This person might try to do something to me. Anything that happens in life, you look at it through a lens of fear because you have seen the biggest fear you could possibly have of dying. You could, you could do that. Or here's option B. You could decide that you're not afraid of anything anymore because you've experienced the worst possible fear or the strongest form of fear you could possibly experience. And you decide, you know what? I'm not afraid of anything now because I saw the worst of the worst and I survived it. And you have an option. You pick between option A and option B. And you no know, 50 tells that story to explain to people he chose option B. He chose to not be afraid of anything. And that energy, the energy that he uh, came back with, he came back to the world with, was a huge part of what led to the movement that he created and why he was able to sell so many records and why all of you who are listening to me, even if you don't even listen to rap music, you know who 50 Cent is, all right? Because he made himself so big because of the energy that he approached his work with, even if you don't consume his work, you know who he is. So this is why it's so important that you learn to control your anxieties. Because again, 
there are things that there it is it does make sense to be afraid of but most of them don't happen to you on a day-to-day -day basis and for the most part your common sense whatever you consider to be your common sense has kept you alive this far all right so whatever age you are you made it this many years through your common sense to avoid the things that could actually hurt you and here you are okay so that's proof positive that whatever you are actually afraid of tangible real fears you know to avoid those things everything else you don't need to be afraid of right doesn't that just make sense now what happens with most people and this is the mistake that people make is they run away from and avoid anything that they could possibly be afraid of and they avoid fear at all costs but fear is the sign of what you need to do why because what fear is signaling to you is you stepping outside of the the electric fence so to speak of your comfort zone any of you has a dog i think they only use this but i don't think they only use them with dogs but any of you have a dog and you ever put up an electric fence, even if you haven't, I've never had a dog with an electric fence, but the way it works is you bury some wire underneath the ground. The dog can't actually see it, but the wire is buried under the ground. You put a certain collar on the dog and if the dog goes you no know, near the edge of that wire, that electric fence that they can't, the dog can't actually see, it gets a little you know, electric prick. Not a prick, what's the best way of saying it? A little vibration to the dog's collar that doesn't hurt the dog, but lets the dog know, hey, you're going too far. Don't go outside the don't go outside this electric fence. And that is the way a lot of human beings live. A lot of, a lot of you humans, you're not dogs. You're living with an electric fence around your electric fence in your life and a collar around your neck that every time you get close to your comfort zone, you start to feel that fear. You start to get that little little electric uh, vibration that's telling you you're getting a little bit too close to your comfort zone and you shrink back and go back to where you were. And again, this is what fear does. It causes people to shrink, to downsize, to slow down, to do less, to try less, to think less, and just allow life to have its way with you and to basically push you around. But all you have to do is go towards the fear, deal with it, and if you break through that electric fence one time, then you don't have to break through it again because it'll stop trying It'll stop trying to control you. I address this deeply in my Bulletproof Mindset 2.0 course, which if you are not a member of my university, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. You get access to Bulletproof Mindset 2.0. Moving on to point number three. Today's topic, once again, is your fears are overrated. Here's a secret to take with you through life. Open secret. Anytime you are nervous, anxious, fearful, Remember that all the other people around you are feeling the exact same emotions most of the time. There have been times when you were nervous or anxious or fearful. Everybody else around you was nervous, anxious, and fearful too. The difference between one person and the next, and hopefully you're that one person, is that some people, that's you, learn to act in the face of fear, moving towards the fear, dealing with the thing that you are afraid of, and realizing what ultimately happens you realize that the thing that you are afraid of, you didn't really need to be afraid of because it wasn't really much there. It presented itself as something that was a lot, but once you dealt with it, you realize uh, it wasn't really anything you had to be worried about. While what happens to other people, unfortunately, is they never learn to do this, or they never actually do it. It's not, they don't, you don't even have to learn to do it, you just do it. All right, there's nothing to learn. I mean, move towards, you see something that makes you feel anxious and fearful, just move towards it. I mean, there's nothing to learn there. Just You just need to take the step. Thing is, a lot of people just don't have the courage to do it. And unfortunately, the world that we're living in today is encouraging people to do the opposite of this. It's encouraging people to run away. It's encouraging people to cancel, delete, uh, try to shut down, shout down anything that causes them what they consider to be pain, but it's not actual pain. Again, they've expanded the definition of the word. There's a, a lot of people in a, a battle against the dictionary these days. This is why I made the episode on why the dictionary matters. A lot of people never learn to do this, or they never do it. I just, I just take the word learn out of that. And they spend their entire lives avoiding and running from anything that they are afraid of. Understand that this is not a skill difference, it's not a resource difference, it's not an opportunity or a talent difference between you, the person who will go towards stuff, and the, the canceler or the fearful person who runs away from everything. This is a mindset and a psychology difference. And this is why I told you that everything comes back to mindset uh, in, a, in a previous episode of this show just a couple of days ago. Do you see, like I told you, how everything comes back to that mentality? Everything comes back to the way you think. Everything comes back to your psychology. No matter what's happening, literally and tangibly happening in your life everything comes back to the way that you are thinking it comes back to the way that your mind is wired the good news is you can change what you're thinking you can change how you think especially your subconscious thoughts by repetition and conscious programming i talk about that in my book the mental workbook if you don't have it get it by going to workonmygame.com slash workbook and 
you can change your psychological approach to anything that you're doing, your psychology, by the way that you program your mind. Again, this goes by the repetition. You can put strategies and systems in place for the way that you think. And again, in my mental workbook, I lay all of this stuff out. So you can get it by going to, again, workonmygame.com slash workbook, or when you go get your free copy of my book, The Third Day or The Mirror of Motivation, because nobody reads just one book. So you can't get the mental workbook by itself, but why get one book? You might as well get a bunch. When you get Third Day or The Mirror of Motivation, as you go through the sales funnel, there's a point where I'm gonna offer you the Mental Game Super Duper Bundle, which is four books, yes, four. The mental Workbook is one, 30 Days of Discipline is another, Bulletproof Mindset 1.0 is another, and my book, Work On Your Game. You get all four, because who reads this one book anyway? So you might as well get all four. So go to mirrorofmotivation.com or thirddaybook.com and just go through the funnel, just say yes to everything I offer you, and you'll get 10 books. You're actually gonna get more than 10, because you'll get all 10 that you order, and I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna give you some bonuses, some, some uh, some goodies that are unadvertised as well. Anybody who's gotten any of my big bundles, you know that I sent you a box with more stuff than what you even thought you were getting in the mail. So anyway, on that said, let's recap today's class, which is your fears are overrated. Definition of fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. We talk about fear a lot here on the show because everything comes back to mindset and fear is one of the most, it is not one of the most, it is the most debilitating and um, constricting mentalities you could possibly have. That's why it's so important that you learn to control it. I'm not saying eliminate it, but control it. Number one, looking at that definition, the belief that something is dangerous or likely to cause pain or a threat. You look at the definitions of threat and threat and pain. You see that people have expanded on these definitions to make people more afraid and more fearful of more things. Now, why would anybody want to do this? Why would somebody want to make you more fearful and more feeling like you're under a threat from anything that can happen in life. Here's the reason why, because the more fearful and anxious you are, the easier you are to control. And a lot of people want the power of being able to control other people. And a great way people can do it these days is simply with words. And the truth is, there is no life ever that is based in fear that results in prosperity. Point number two, fear is not a sign of what you need to eliminate, cancel, avoid, or run away from. Fear is a sign of what you need to go towards. So what you need to do is start moving yourself towards fear because most people go away from fear. So if you do the opposite of what most people do, like Earl Nightingale said in The Stranger's Secret, you'll get different from what most people get. And most people are average or mediocre or worse by definition. Number three, here's a secret to take with you through life. Anytime you are nervous, anxious, fearful, Remember that all the other people around you are feeling the exact same emotions. The difference between you and them is that you go towards the fear while everybody else is running away from it. And this is not about skill or opportunity or talent. This is a mindset and psychology difference. And like I told you in yesterday's episode, everything comes back to mindset. All that said, text me, get my daily motivation for free straight to your phone every day. My number is 305-384-6894. Secondly, get your ticket to work on your game live where we're going to cover Number one, mindset. Number two, strategy. Number three, systems. Number four, execution. Two days here in Miami with me. Go to your ticket by going to workonyourgame.live. And number three, get access to all of my courses and my coaching program. If you want to be coached by me, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. All your options, everything you need to do is listed right there on that page. Work on your game. Dre all day.